but I can only see me. I can't see anybody but Melissa. I can't see you either. She likes it that way. She arranged that. Let's see if I can find my video. You have to turn on your webcam. What's right there? Oh. I know, but why are you not showing? Sure? Well, that's what I was wondering. Are you not a panelist? Oh, I'm, I can see the. I don't even see me on there. You're not on as a panelist. You're yeah, not on as Bobby, you got to put me on as a panelist. You got to elevate him, Bobby. He's just an attendee. It's listed as a panelist here. <laughs> and what about I'm not doing much better here Bobby, my picture is my one. Are you what? Yeah. Okay. And I just I just reset the invitation again. I see that. Yeah. We did, but I need to enlarge this. Okay, there's five. There we are. Okay. So are we ready yet? Almost. Okay. It's obvious that this electronic is not perfected yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> I like a webinar. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are we ready now? Yes, sir. I think we are. Okay, cool. So, welcome everybody to the January 4th, 2022 Board of Coos County Commissioners meeting. We'll lead off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise, take off your hats, so that. And I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under, in, under God, invisible, with liberty and justice for all. And so much for that. All righty. 2A Public Hearing Community Development Block Grant, Coos County Emergency Child Care Assistance Grant Program. Who is doing that one? County Council? Yes, sir. Yep, now it's handling yes. that. Nan, are you there? I see you signed on. Oh, here I am. Yes, sorry, I was muted there. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So this is Coos County is preparing an application for a 2022 Community Development Block Grant from Business Oregon uh, the, for the proposed Coos County Emergency Child Care Assistance Grant Program. If awarded, this program will be offered throughout Coos County to provide child care to low and moderate income kids to allow parents re to return back to work and they can meet program requirements. And I, my understanding is we have a few individuals who are have uh, signed in to uh, comment further on this. And we okay. will, anyone else uh, who wants to speak on it as well can speak. Bob, we you, uh, Bob, this is John. Could you ask Melissa Metz to testify first? I know she has another commitment okay. shortly Melissa, after this. Please. Uh... 
Uh, thank you. Um, this is thank Melissa you. Metz with South Coast Business Employment Corporation uh, asking that the Coos County Board of Commissioners to support the 2022 Community Development Block Grant from Business Oregon for the Coos County Emergency Child Care Assistance Grant Program. This program will contribute to the urgent needs of stabilizing our local economy by assisting families to return to, return to work and supporting child care businesses through tuition assistance vouchers for low, moderate income parents, guardians, by covering the costs of childcare. This funding is a win-win strategy for the childcare provider, the children and families in our community, and the economic stability of our region. According to a report by Child Care Aware of America, childcare is one of the biggest expenses of families in the United States. For some parents, the cost of childcare is even higher than housing, food, transportation, and education. Furthermore, finding affordable yet high quality childcare is a challenge for many families. Childcare providers would tell you that if you got control of your cash flow, you got a lot of your problems taken care of. The iron triangle of early, early care and education finance is a simple formula for program sustainability and focuses on the three most important elements, achieving full enrollments, collecting tuition in full and on time, and ensuring tuition covers the costs. The Emergency Child Care Assistance Grant Program in the form of vouchers supports the Iron Triangle by providing a marketing tool, which is the voucher, to fill programs that are under-enrolled, expanding, or brand new. The voucher program also ensures payments will be paid in full and on time. Beyond full enrollment and timely cash flow, it is necessary to understand that the childcare industry is funded by families' tuition. Uh, it is estimated at 57% and government contributions at 40%. As such, Coos County plays a critical role to ensure that the CDBG is part of the funding strategy for sustainability. With the current child care crisis affecting the stability and availability of child care across the country, the most it's, uh, and most especially in rural areas like Coos County, support for our local providers is of the utmost importance. Families often must make a choice to find an arrangement that will fit within their budget, resulting in their children missing out on high quality programming. Reinforcing the cycle of poverty, which includes the absence of quality education. One of the biggest contributors to ending poverty is ensuring children have an education. For any child, education can open doors to the future. From birth to age five, a child's brain develops more rapidly than any other time in life. Scientific research has made clear that the quality of child's experiences in the first few years of life, positive or negative, helps shape how their brain develops. And these experiences have lasting impact on their health, ability to learn, and success in school and in life. Therefore, it is important to support families and the healthy development of young children through the availability of affordable childcare. What happens to kids in the first five years lays the foundation of a lifetime. And when children are provided with high quality childcare and early education, they can develop essential skills that make them more prepared to become self-sufficient and contributing members of our community. Thank you for considering and supporting the 2022 Community Development Block Grant from Business Oregon for the Coos County Emergency Child Care Assistance Grant Program as part of the solution for stabilizing our local economy by assisting families to return to work and stabilizing child care businesses. Thank you, Melissa. Anyone else wish to testify? Bob, I believe Marie Simons is uh... I don't see her Wanting to testify. I don't see her on either. I don't see her on, okay, perhaps she couldn't make it. All right. Anyone else? Um, this is Tracy Loomis from CCD Business Development Corporation. Um, 
thank you, Melissa. That was um, an awesome uh, presentation. Um, just a little bit about um, CDBG or Community Development Block Grant. And I know that we've um, seen this a, a lot lately, <laughs> but um, these are federal dollars um, that is passed through the state of Oregon. The state of Oregon um, has used some of these funds for COVID-19 impact assistance and um, we've used them in Coos County for micro enterprise businesses and um, it's great. It's not something we have ever seen before in the form of grants. So um, this program um, is a great one. It hasn't been utilized much in the state of Oregon for the childcare portion. Um, we have all been checking in with um, Business Oregon on what that might look like so that we can be prepared if you all um, want to go forth with the application. It is for a maximum um, up to $250,000 would be the application uh, amount. And as far as per student slash family, um, that's something that we can determine after this point. Um, to, um, I think it, I think that we've already talked about that as well, so that there would be like up to 20 families or so that would benefit. So anyway, um, it is something that we're used to and um, it's a, it sounds like a great, a great project. Thank you. All right, team. Thank you, Tracy. Anyone else? Hi, this is Okay. Oh, okay. Well, there Hi. we are. This is Marie. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Thank you so much, commissioners. Well, I just uh, wanted to take a moment and um, make sure you are aware that I think there's a lot of support for this CBDG opportunity. Um, and, you know, really have a lot of confidence in Melissa and her team at South Coast Business and Tracy and her team. Um, and that this is really a team effort to try and work on solutions for childcare. I would just um, point, want to point out in addition to that, that um, this CBDG grant opportunity, I think is part of a series of tools in our toolbox on the South Coast that we are looking to assemble in order to make childcare more affordable and more accessible for people on the South Coast. Uh, between South Coast Business, the South Coast Early Learning Hub, the CCRNR, and many other uh, foundations and entities that are supporting these groups and others, uh, we're working collectively towards solutions. We've got Preschool Promise, we've got Baby Promise, Head Start, we're working on a provider recruitment strategy, um, there's program support, shared services, and as I said, you know, we're, we're assembling the tools in the toolbox um, that the South Coast needs in order to make significant progress towards increasing child care. So thank you so much and um, ask for your support of this program. All righty. Anyone else? Thank you, Marie. Commissioner Cribbins, Commissioner Sweet. And um, I think this is a, a great program. I'd like to see us support it. I don't believe we need a motion from us at this time, though. Is that correct? No. We'll have another hearing. Yeah. Okay. Anyone I, else? I'd, uh, I'd agree with Melissa on that. This is a wonderful opportunity for us. I'm very, very appreciative of, of, of the work that's gone into getting us to this point. And uh, so we owe Tracy and, and CCD a big thank you. Melissa at Quebec, a big thank you. Uh, Marie is right at the forefront of, of these activities. Uh, thanks for all you do, Marie. And then our county council and our county uh, finance director all, all have had a hand in this. So thank you all for uh, bringing this to us. Okay, thank you all. Very well said, John. And you know, I, I think the thing that people might not realize is that our staff and CCD and members of the community have been so flexible and so fast at getting on these funding opportunities over the last year and a half as they've come. Um, and it's really made a difference for Coos County. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think CCD has been fantastic in what they've done. They set the they set the uh, goal, uh, the the pace for the state in in getting COVID uh, uh, assistance money out. Okay. Anyone else? 
Okay, let's move on to 2B, ordinance amending Article 11 of the Coos County Code to process uh, for a county code compliance hearings officer. County Council. Thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing uh, to consider the proposed ordinance 2112-011-L. Uh, notice of this proposed hearing was published and posted in accordance with ORS 203.045. So this ordinance would create an administrative process allowing for violations of uh, the county code and the county uh, uh, land development and zoning rules, and basically any county ordinance to be cited to a hearings officer with the authority to conduct hearings on these alleged violations. Uh, the hearings officer would have the authority to rule on alleged violations and assess civil penalties and other remedies allowed by the county code. So basically it would create a process that would be an alternative to a citation to uh, you know, the circuit court here uh, and could create some administrative efficiencies. I also have an administrative, uh, some other administrative processes in there that could apply to any violations case. Um, and the new division would not preclude the county from taking any other enforcement action, including what we already do, which is sometimes issue uh, citations to appear in circuit court. Certainly we can keep doing that. This is just gives us another tool that we could potentially use if we were to uh, you know, hire a hearings officer and, and try that process out. Okay, so at this time I'll take public comment. Do you want to read it by title first? That would be good. Um, I, and I can I can do that. Um, it's uh, ordinance 2112-011-L. It's an ordinance of Coos County creating provisions for administrative code enforcement and procedures, procedures and procedures for code compliance hearings officers. Okay, any comments? We have a gentleman, I believe, who's been waiting to testify on this. I'm going to step away from my desk and let him use my computer to testify. Okay, he's here present, huh? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. There he is. Go ahead and have a seat. You can just go ahead and sit down in my chair. And you can take your mask off while you're testifying and just go ahead and look in the camera. You're right there. Yeah. And they can hear you just fine if you speak. So what do I do? Just go ahead and take your mask off and say what you wanted to say. Say what I want to say? Okay. Yeah. This, this, uh, this, uh, you find Sorry. this real microprint, uh, uh, copy of the, of the letter meeting is, uh, uh, uh com com complex. But as well, I, I come across and I see, does this make with the complications of this meeting and then the stipulations, does this make this, uh, the, the, the commissioners and, and the this, this, uh, governor and any other higher official, does this make them, does this advocates of more, more and for, further uh, homelessness? There's also a hardship on uh, the, uh, the uh, burdens on uh, property owners throughout the county as well as other places. And uh, there, there should be a, a, until they, they should come across with a, a finer, uh, a larger print so that people can see them and help to make people that easier to comply with the regulations, I mean, this, this regulations seem like they're quite suspicious, and and there should be uh, uh, the person on it for a home home owner or a home landowner to make make this uh, uh, easier to comply, so that they can go ahead and and. Uh, Comply with the deal and make make things like the higher rent is the higher rent and, and the high, uh, higher higher uh, costs uh, 
they, they should make this easier so that people down there should have, have uh, easier uh, access to rental and, and home ownership. So uh, I, I object to the meeting and they, they should have uh, finer print on your, on your lettering. Your lettering down there is, is micro print. And then uh, they, they should, they should I, like I said, I got the impression that uh, the governor and then commissioners uh, are advocates of homelessness. And, and and that shouldn't be. It should be more the people down there have easier, you know, like uh, lower end and as well as uh, making a person that wants to desire to uh, own a place, makes it, makes it easier for them to uh, own a piece of property. Okay, thank you. Sir, yeah, sir this is John Sweet. Name, one of the general location of where you live? I, I, I live uh, in Coos Bay. Okay, that's good. Your name, please? Anthony, Anthony T. Kenyon. Oh, thank you. Thank you much. Post office box 1511. Who's we don't know our address, actually, just your general location and your name, for just for the record. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Anyone else want to comment? Okay. Yeah. Thank Cindy. you. Yeah. Melissa, does somebody else want to you say? Cindy Smith. Cindy Smith wants to uh, comment? Are they online or where are they? Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Are you Miss right. Smith? This is Mrs. Smith, and thank you everybody for taking the time for us today. Um, I'm hoping that the this new ruling would help with the drug compound that we have in our district in our area. It seems that our law, law enforcement are not able to um, address the situation that we have that's been a, a, going on for a decade now. So um, I'm hoping that this will give them some authority to get in there and take care of some of the DEQ issues that are going on and just um, hopefully clean up our neighborhood. Okay, thank you very much. Anything thank else? You. No, that's it, thank you. Okay, anyone else? <clears throat> Commissioner Sweet or Commissioner Crivens? I'd like to respond to Cindy. I, I think that uh, this is one of the targets that we are, are looking at in, in being able to expedite uh, uh, problems such as the one or, or treatment of problems such as the one she described. I would agree. It's, it, is, it is difficult to get especially out-of-state lenders to act on their property when they apparently are allowing uh, occupation of their property uh, by many, many, many individuals that have no interest in the property. And to me, it's not fair to the neighbors to have to uh, put up with that. Any other comments from anyone? I I agree, and I think the biggest challenge during the last couple of years has just been um, that the court processes have been slowed down due to COVID, and code enforcement is not um, is not the highest priority of state courts, which we understand. You know, that it's more important that they try person crimes first and other such things. So this is a way for us to take some of the burden off state courts also and move things through in a faster way. And for code compliance, uh, our Planning department sent multiple letters to these particular institutions, and they just ignore us. And mm -hmm. it keeps existing. And like I said before, it's not fair to the neighbors. They have to put up with that. Anyone else? Okay, we will move on to item 3A, election of chair and vice chair for 2022 Board of County Commissioners. And as I, you may or may not know, chair. we rotate the chair and the vice chair every year. So as Let's slow down. the last moment here, I will nominate John Sweet as chair and Commissioner Cribbins as vice chair. Do I have a second from either one of you? <laughs> 
think about it now. Things are going pretty well the way they are, don't you think, Melissa? I pretty feel easy. Like they were. I will second it though, because Commissioner Main, I think, would like a break from this. Thank you for the second. <laughs> Hearing no discussion at all, I don't want any. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Commissioner Sweet, would you please take over? Well, Sheriff before Sweet. we uh, continue Sheriff with Sweet. our agenda items, I'd, I'd like to stop for just a moment and uh, thank Bob for his service as chair of the Board of Commissioners. It's uh, a bit more of a task than just being a commissioner. And of course, uh, he fills the role very, very well. We're fortunate to have him. So thank you, Bob. And with that, we'll move on to item 3B, which is swearing in of our new county clerk. But before that, I think we ought to uh, have a motion to confirm her appointment to that position. I move to appoint Darius Murphy as county clerk for the remainder of Debbie Heller's term. I second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, that formalizes uh, DD's appointment uh, to county clerk. Uh, so, Melissa, would you mind swearing her in? I do not. I'm go ahead. There we go. I'm going to turn my camera. Oh, tell me if you can't hear it at any point. We're going to we're going to figure this out. All right. Yeah, you. Where am I? I'm on the I'm on the other side. Oops, the camera. Uh, oh well, they can just see you. That's all that matters. Okay. So go ahead and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Jairus Murphy. I, Jairus Murphy. I was calling you Dee Dee. Do you must solemnly swear? Do must solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Oregon. And the Constitution of the State of Oregon. And that I will faithfully perform the duties. And that I will faithfully perform the duties of the Office of County Clerk. Of the Office of County Clerk. To which I have been appointed. To which I have been appointed. To the best of my ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so help God. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. And so we will get this signed. Let's do the signing. I have a pen. Sorry, my desk is tiny, but I will let you. <laughs> and it's official. Yay. Your mom's now a county clerk. <laughs> okay, so do I take this? You take that. I think that, yeah, it goes to your office anyway. Perfect. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so strange, but thank you. <laughs> So hopefully we'll never do another swearing in virtually again, right? Uh, before we move on, I'd like to comment just for a moment on the selection process for our uh, for DD. Um, when our previous now previous county clerk decided that she would like to retire at the end of the year, uh, we uh, advertised for uh, people to consider filling that position for the remainder of the previous clerk's term or until the next election. And um, we had five or six applicants and I would say they were very, very good applicants. However, other than Dee Dee, none had had any real experience in the clerk's office. Dee Dee had worked in the clerk's office, specifically in the elections office, or primarily in the elections office uh, for a good number of years before her retirement. Uh, this is a very important position. Of course, you, you know it, it has to do with elections. Those have to run smoothly and it takes an experienced person to make that happen. The other part, the other responsibility the clerk has is uh, uh, official documents, uh, recording of, of land uh, transactions, uh, issuance of uh, marriage certificates, birth certificates, I guess they come first, birth certificates, marriage certificates, death certificates, uh, dog certificates, whatever. 
so it's a very important position. We were very fortunate, in my view, to have DD willing to step forward and, and fill this position until the next general election. So with that, uh, thank you, DD, and we'll move on to item 3B, which is a request for support from the Port of Coquille River uh, dis, uh, regarding salmon enhancement. And I think, Bob, have you been, are you familiar with this? Well, I'm not, but um, I would like to. Well, why not? Okay. Um, the Port of uh, Coquille River District would like to support the Salmon Enhancement Program. And what they have said is uh, they want the County Board of Commissioners support the efforts of the PCRD at Salmon Enhancement and Invasive Species Eradication in Coquille River System. I believe we have somebody from the port on too. Oh, good. All righty. You can talk now. Pick up your phone yeah. and talk. Hello? Thank you. Yes. Yes, would you yeah. introduce yourself and your position and your residence and then uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, uh, the work the port is doing? Right. All right. My name's Fred Fry. I'm uh, commission, commissioner number four. I uh, live in Powers. I'm also on the city council there. Um, we're The Coquille River system is overrun with invasive smallmouth bass. The uh, salmon returns are down to about 1%. Uh, we're proposing to put together a derby uh, whereby we're going to get a bunch of fish and tag them and put price tags on them. I saw this done in uh, Puget Sound where they had salmon derbies for a considerable period of time, and they put million-dollar tags on a few salmon, and you could have walked across the Puget Sound on the boats that turned out there. Right now, a fellow by the name of Cam Perry has contacted me, and he has nine radio stations, and they want to sponsor a single $250,000 fish. We're talking about putting, um, uh, and I've already spoke with uh, some salmon techs, how to tag the fish. And I was a, I grew up in Port Arford, and I was a, uh, when I got out of college, I went, commercial fishing was the best option at that point. And, uh, and I fished in the, on the West Coast and in Alaska for the better part of three decades. So, you know, if you ever saw the show, The Deadliest Catch, I knew all those guys when the show ever started, for instance. But anyway, uh, and I've seen overfishing. You know, I, first year I went to Alaska, there's, you know, the king crab quota was 200 million pounds, and about 18 years later, they, you know, they they could you couldn't catch one of them. There was a statewide moratorium on them. So, what we want to bring to bear is that basically overfishing on this invasive smallmouth bass, and if we put a price tag on them, and we're going to put together a derby, uh, and we're signing up, and you know, we've got a the Oregon Anglers Alliance and a variety of other organizations have a large list of, of people that would uh, that we're going to solicit and advertise for. And uh, so what we really want from you is uh, just an expression of support for our efforts. And the reason why I'm asking that is that uh, uh, I just spoke with Gary Bondaro, and we're dealing with a catch-22 situation. They put out a uh, memorandum uh, in last May saying there's no limit on the amount of bass you can catch, the size or anything. And then they also have a, some in-house memorandum or a law, and he's going to get back to me this coming week, that uh, you know, it, it tells me exactly what that is. So we're in a catch-22 situation where they want, you know, anybody can go out there and catch all they want, but if we put a derby or something together like that, there's some rule against it. So I've gone to, you know, the Power City Council, the Myrtle Point City Council, I just visited the City Council of Coquille last night and the Bannonport Commission, and I'm going to visit other city councils, I hope. So we, so when we deal with the fishing game, at least they'll understand that there's a, you know, a groundswell of support for our efforts to try and eradicate these smallmouth bass. And I'm hoping that we can mobilize maybe up to 5,000 people with fishing poles out there uh, targeting these fish, and we'll put prizes on them ranging from maybe 50 to $500. And, and I told you about uh, Cam Perry's uh, proposal. So, uh, so just an expression of support from you guys for our efforts uh, so that, uh, you know, fishing game or ODF and W, you call them here, uh, doesn't shut us down and put obstacles in our way. Uh, also, the, uh, the Coquille Indian tribe, Brenda Mead, was the first person I talked to, and they're 100% behind us all the way. And so, you know, I'm just the reason why I'm here is, is the fear of the catch 22 that ODF and W might try to prevent this from happening. And, 
if nobody puts any obstacles in our way, I'm quite sure that we can pull off this derby. And you know, we don't expect the first one, just one, to do the job. We want to have, you know, uh, at least two a year. And if, if ODFW will work with us, we'll get a uh, – I know they've got the in-house biologist there that can – measure the biomass and how much we're removing it and we're not going to eradicate the smallmouth bass there but what we're going to do is whittle them down to the point where the you know the salmon have a fighting chance when they you know the, it's the little guys when they're heading back out to the ocean that's the ones that they'll just snap right up there and the uh, the system is just completely overrun and uh, lampreys or something another thing and all the uh, you know indigenous species that are in that system are just getting consumed by this invasive uh, fish that we're, we're dealing with here and so uh, it, 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 the efforts that have been put forth by ODF and W of poisoning or shocking or nets uh, creates a huge amount of bycatch so the fishing pole is well we'll just target that individual fish and by putting a price tag out there and making it a lottery and fun for everybody uh, we, we hope to mobilize uh, you know several thousand people out there uh, to go after this and I guess I've uh, presented this to a lot of people. Uh, everywhere I've gone, we've had overwhelming support and a and positive response. So, whatever mechanisms available for you guys just to, to say, yeah, we're with you, you know, we're with you, brothers, go ahead and do it. And uh, that's what I'm asking for today. Thank All right. You. I should All right. Say, I, should, I should also say that I'm on the board of the OAA Oregon Anglers Alliance. Um, and, and at that point, I would like to propose that the Board of Commissioners support the efforts of the Port of Coquille River District to try and reduce the invasive species in the South Fork of the Coquille. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion approved. Uh, Fred, thank you so much for, for your efforts in this regard. Um, you might check with, there's a, a company out on Seven Devils Road that makes uh, a potting soil. And, and part of the process is uh, to integrate fish waste from the Charleston plants in, into soil and uh, bark and other things and, and to come up with a pretty yeah. high grade potting soil. And uh, I talked to them about the, uh, the smallmouth bass issue, and they said, "Well, yeah, we could take those bass whole and uh, just go. integrate them into our process." Uh, I'll yeah, try to get you their you, name and number. So, um, you know, I didn't have a chance to go over everything that we're doing, and uh, you know, Josh Bettsworth and, and Leonard Krug have been really helpful in this, and they've been in contact with them, and what we were. You know, that's just an excellent idea there, by the way, and I certainly will appreciate that contact information. But uh, we also have some uh, fish processors that want to come and uh, put up some filleting stations, oh. and, uh, and they'll fillet for the people that catch the fish. And then uh, they would, in turn, the, the hanging bait or the carcasses are really valuable for crab fishing and, uh, and highly sought after. So I just, and there's a more, even more to this than I, you know, have presented so far. But I was just trying to get the, you know, just the, the high points to it. But that uh, composting, it, it, there's bound to be some extra. And we want to uh, do this uh, until we get them whittled down and use this as the mechanism. And it might be a template for other rivers with other invasive species. So, uh, and, and thank you very much, uh, John Sweet, there for, for that proposal. And I'd, I'd gladly accept that contact information. You know, maybe you might email it or, or what have you. I got your number here, so or the port's number. I'll get the information to you. So wonderful, wonderful. And, and well, thank, thank you, you for your efforts. Your and any other questions or comments by the commissioners? No, sounds like a good idea, though. Yeah. Thanks, Fred. Okay, you guys take care and thanks a lot. Much appreciated. You okay, too. let's thank move you. on then to item 3D: request a, uh, approval of an order incorporating land into the. Coos County Forest. Good morning. Good morning. Is this Lance? Yep, there's Lance. How's tree planting going? It's uh, going good. They had a good day out there yesterday, as you can good. imagine. Um, <laughs> Didn't look like a good day to me. Uh, it's good tree planting weather. <laughs> what do you got for us? So, okay. So, in September of 2021, the county foreclosed on tax account 535000, which is a five acre parcel off Ross Inlet Road 
this parcel of land would fit into the county forest management plan. If the board is agreeable, we have prepared and attached resolution 21-12-081L, which would incorporate this parcel of land into the county forest. I move to approve and sign resolution 21-12-081L, which would incorporate tax account 535-000 as described therein into the Coos County Forest. A second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is there further, dis is there any discussion? Nope. Very good idea, Lance. Uh, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion approved. Thank, Thank you, you Lance. Much. Thank you. Mr. Chair, move to approve the consent calendar. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion approved. Uh, I don't think we have any late agenda items. Uh, citizen comments. Uh, is there anyone that would like to comment? Uh, Cameron Frazier. Stringfield. Uh, Cameron Stringfield. Stringfield, okay, thank you. Uh, hi, good morning. My name is Cameron Stringfield and I'm a trans woman living in Coos Bay. Uh, I wanted to come to you today because Coos Bay recognized June as LGBTQ plus Pride Month last year. And they adopted a flag policy that would allow a citizen to come to the council with the flag that they want to fly. And if the city decides that they want to fly it, uh, it'll get flown. Uh, I want to see this county as a whole recognize June as LGBTQ plus Pride Month, and I hope that you will also adopt a flag policy and choose to fly an LGBTQ plus Pride flag this June. Representation and solidarity matters very much for our community, and this would be a good example of progress for the county. Thank you very much, and have a good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Any response to Cameron? No, no I'm we just asking, should respond. I was asking people in my office that they had any public comments they wanted to do, Phil and Dick, but they I don't believe have any public comments. All right. Who is this, who, Bobby? I don't see oh, Bobby. okay, uh, Bobby does not see any raised hands from others on the phone or on the call. So uh, with that, we'll close citizen comments and go to commissioner's reports. Bob, tell us about Florida. Well, for me, I went to uh, visit our son in Florida for Christmas, where it was 81 degrees, clear blue skies most of the time. Um, we had an enjoyable time. It was uh, interesting. Being back in Florida, uh, I don't recommend being around millions upon millions upon millions of people all doing 85 down the freeways and doing all kinds of things with their vehicles that we don't find here. So it's good to be back where it's much more relaxed in our county and where you can drive down the highway and not be uh, so defensive about what people are doing five feet from you. Melissa, is that all, Bob? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the cars are all five foot apart going 85 miles an hour. <laughs> it, it's just, it's an experience to uh, avoid, live. sounds like to me. Live beyond that, yes. <laughs> okay, Melissa. I rented a Dodge Neon one time in Las Vegas to go down to Boulder City to visit my grandparents. <laughs> and, um, and it's hard to push those, I mean, at the time anyway, probably they got better, I'm not bashing on Dodge Neons, but at the time it was hard to push them up over 60 miles an hour. And I can tell you on that freeway down there, going 60 miles an hour, you wanna just get as far over as you can and turn on your hazards, so. Was that back when you drove over the dam? Because now they have a new bridge. That was back when you drove over the dam. That was like 94, so. Yeah, they have a brand new bridge. It's down below the dam that goes, bypasses the dam itself. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Nice four lane freeway. Yeah, I like driving over the dam. I think it I think it was a homeland security issue, right? Yes. That's why they changed it. Yeah. Um 
I don't have a ton. I hope everybody had a great um, holiday with two holidays in there. Seems to shorten our time. Um, I did complete our application for courthouse improvement funding, which um, I emailed out to uh, maintenance and legal and you guys just so you could see it, but I wanted to get it in. We're requesting funding to replace the carpet in the courthouse, um, the windows with energy efficient windows, so all the windows match and to paint the outside. Um, it's a bigger ask than you would think for those three items. It works out to about a million, so, a million five, um, which if it was your personal home, you would be very confused, but it's a really large building, which people don't always realize, and there's a lot of windows in it. So we should know something about that at the end of the short session in February. And um, what'll happen now is AOC will take the list, Association of Working Counties will take the list. They'll have a committee meeting and they will rank those requests as well as ranking the courthouse replacement um, requests. And then they will submit those they will go to the chief judge and they will be submitted to the legislature and a line will be drawn above which projects will be funded and below which they will not be funded. It'll just depend on how much bonding capacity the state has. So we've gotten two of those grants before and we have always spent them very responsibly. Our last one was to help um, move courtroom four over into the courthouse and, and eliminate the North Bend Annex. Um, we have a very good reputation for spending our money wisely and carefully. So I'm hopeful that we will receive funding for that. Um, the North Bend City Manager, David Miller, sent me an email about grant funding for interpretive signs um, through Oregon, I think it's Oregon State Parks in conjunction with Oregon Community Foundation. And I would like us to apply for that um, in order to fund some interpretive signs for the mountain biking trails. It's kind of the last phase of what we've always talked about. And those signs would allow people to understand what they're seeing when they're seeing the forest management. A lot of our visitors, if they come from Oregon, they're coming from Central Oregon, they've ridden in Bend or they've ridden in Hood River. We know that tree growing conditions are very different here. We grow a, the same size tree in about half the time. And I think it'd be great to have some interpretive signs out there that talk about that and maybe a little history of the area. Um, I was going to work with Lance on getting that prepared. Um, we had a little excitement around my house because one of my Labradors swallowed a tennis ball on Christmas Eve. Um, we Nobody saw her swallow the tennis ball. We're still not sure how she actually got the tennis ball down, but she threw up on Christmas day and the day after that, and again on the morning of the 27th. So I took her to the vet and they did an X-ray and there was a whole round tennis ball in her stomach. So they had to do emergency surgery and uh, remove the offending tennis ball and she's recovering nicely. But just, just when you think a lab couldn't eat something, it turns out they can. Wow. Well, yeah. I would, uh, I'm sorry for your dog. I would suspect she's now uh, even more valuable dog than she was before Christmas. <laughs> she is. <laughs> and, uh, and she's wearing the cone of shame as she waits <laughs> to get her stitches out. She doesn't seem to feel bad about her decision at all, from what I can tell. And uh, we celebrated Debbie Heller, our previous county clerk's retirement on the 28th. And Commissioner Sweet and I were both able to be there and present her a plaque. They had a lovely turnout. The planning department did a great job of decorating um, and just did a really nice job. And then I, I hope this isn't inappropriate because I, I think she's been really open with this, but one of our employees in the planning department um, has lost her daughter in a car accident. And so that's been really hard on um, everybody in the planning department. And I've given them a little flexibility on their hours because um, she's out for an indefinite period of time. Her daughter was 15 years old. So that's it. Thank you, Melissa, and thank you for bringing that up. That was a real tragedy, and uh, I, I think we should all be aware of it. Terribly sad. Um, it's sad. Yes. I appreciate your comments about the bike trail, and I think signage will be important out there. I spend quite a bit of time there, and it's interesting to me how divided some of the writers are about whether we, for the harvest, whether we should go ahead and harvest the forest, which we plan to do, or not. Uh, a few, not very many, say, oh gosh, please don't harvest this. 
most say by far we appreciate so much having a, a bike trail like this it's very unique it's absolutely special and the county should be thanked for making it available we we know and they they said we find it interesting riding through various uh, stages of, of uh, county forests from shortly after harvest on through regeneration and until up to the age of, of uh, that's ready for harvest already. Um, we we did commission last year a study uh, done by uh, the forestry, the, uh, well, the outdoor recreation division of the forestry college at Oregon State. Uh, did a, a assessment of what other amenities might be needed to further enhance the um, the bike path, and we expect that uh, study to be done uh, yet this month. So we should have some some uh, better ideas. Um, one of the things that had already risen to the top was some form of a camping facility. Uh, near the bike path to accommodate bikers and also windsurfers or kiteboarders who come to use the uh, the beach at, at uh, Whiskey Run for kiteboarding. And uh, so one of our timber sales that we're scheduling this year is a, it'll be a one-year sale. It's a rather small sale, uh, but it would clear some ground for a campsite. Uh, unfortunately, with the strong winds we have, it's not safe to just clear parts of the area uh, to accommodate a, a camper or a tent uh, because the, the wind tends to blow the remaining trees down and uh, pretty hazardous. So we have to clear cut first and let it grow back. I've uh, spent a good deal of time this last week between Christmas and New Year's with County Council on our Cruz Bay Wagon Road issue with uh, BLM. Um, we're, we're having a, uh, an appraisal committee uh, meeting this coming Friday. Uh, that's a big step forward. One of the things the BLM refused to do, of course, was to convene the appraisal committee to set the values upon which their payments in lieu of taxes to the county are to be based. So this is a good step forward in that. Um, our roads, uh, Department's very busy, of course, cleaning up uh, trees and plug culverts and one thing or another from uh, Sunday night and yesterday's uh, storms. Uh, have very busy. I don't know of any horrible damage. I think we got through fairly easily, but frankly, I've not caught anyone in the road department to, uh, they're all out working to really find out for sure what, what we have going. Um, we are completing the uh, bulkhead along the pipeline where there was some risk that the gas pipeline would um, uh, be exposed by uh, riverbank erosion of the Coquille River, uh, just upriver from the town of Coquille, the city of Coquille. So that's going on. I expect that to be finished this week. Um, I think that's all I have. I hope everyone had a happy holiday and good to be back to work, kind of to work. So once the storm damages, uh, the storm settled down. And uh, with that, I will adjourn the meeting.